colleagues. We are delighted to welcome you to our webinar organized by the IPA website editorial board. Our session today is dedicated to the French psychoanalytical research. We have invited and have the pleasure of having with us Cesar Botella, who will present his own conception of psychoanalytical research in France related to the functioning of the Commission for the Research and Development of Psychoanalysis existing within the Paris Psychoanalytical Society. We have also invited and have the pleasure of receiving Marie-France Dispo, who will discuss Cesar's talk. It will be a question of reflecting together on the sense, on the essence of psychoanalytical research and on its role and place in psychoanalytical societies, as well as in modern scientific community. How could we potentially increase the development of psychoanalysis as well as its expansion in the scientific communities? And what kind of dialogue could we unstore among us psychoanalysts and with other disciplines? But before introducing them to you, I will give you some organizational information on the agenda. Uh, during the, as usual, the webinar will be divided in two parts. During the first slot of 45 minutes, Cesar Botella will present us his conception and the perspective he proposed for the psychoanalytical research. Then, Marie-France Dispo will discuss Cesar's proposals. Their texts are displayed in PDF format on the control panel. On the right hand side of your screen, at the bottom of the panel control, it is written hangouts or documents. You can click on the word to open the box. The text will appear inside. You will be able to click on it to download it and read during the presentation. During the second slot, the question and answer session, it is you, participants, you can ask your questions and our guest will answer and discuss as many as possible. Already during the presentations, you can post your questions. For doing so, please post your question in the question pane on the right hand side of your screen. You have to go to the question line. There is a small white arrow that precedes the word question. Click on it to open the dialog box type your answer, your question, and send it. During the discussion, we try to send you in the chat box the question asked, and you could read them. It is below the uh, question box. And now, let me introduce you our first panelist. Cesar Botella is psychiatrist, psychoanalyst in private practice in Paris, training analyst of the Paris Psychoanalytical Society. In collaboration with Sara Botella, he presented the key report to the Congress of French Language Psychoanalysts in 2001 on the theme, Figurability and Regredience. Published in French, English and Spanish, La Figurité Psychique, uh, and um, in English and Spanish. Now, Marie-France Dispo, uh, she is psychologist, psychoanalyst in private practice in Belgium and training analyst of the Belgian Psychoanalytical Society. She is past president and past director of training of the Belgian Society. She was also director and she has written more than 50, 40 papers, mainly in the Belgian Psychoanalytical Journal in the French Psychoanalytical Journal. She presented the keynote report to the Congress of French Language Psychoanalysts in 2002, Au Source de l'Interpretation, in collaboration, in collaboration with Jacqueline Goldfried, Maurice Habert, and Nicole Carrels in Some Transformation Figures from the Interpsychic to the Intrapsychic. She is also involved in the European Psychoanalytical Federation in the specificity of psychoanalytic treatment group and in the IPA 
on the Psychoanalytic Education Committee. Cesar, please. Your Thank you, Eliana. I would like uh, to thank the webinar committee for inviting me to present and discuss a psychoanalytic research in France. I also thank you on behalf of the Commission for Research and Development of Psychoanalysis, CRDP, within the Paris Psychoanalytic Society. I board Bernard Servais, Sabine Lambertucci, Michel Audi, and myself with the collaboration of Francois Quanto. I am also grateful to Marie France Dispo, who agreed without excitation to discuss my presentation. It is not possible today to cover this vast subject entirely. I regret not being able to present the multiple research activities of my society. I mention them in passing because they are a source of knowledge without, without which I would not be here with you today. The Scientific and Technical Council, the Commission for Child and Adolescent Psychoanalysis. I, uh, I am also grateful to the institution created by our member, the SPP Center for Psychoanalysis Consultation and Treatment, the Institute of Psych Psychosomatic, the Kestenberg Center for Borderline and Psychotic Patients and for Children, the Bine Center, and the Clapare Institute. And finally, my most personal gratitude and thanks to go my wife, Sarah, and her thought so necessary for me. I will mainly be presenting my ideas on psychoanalytic research since 2001, which I am currently publishing in the CRDP. For now, let me just say that in the field of research in psychoanalysis, the CRDP is a specific creation of my society created in 2015 by the executive board of Bernard Scherber. Seven point one. In order to situate this French specificity, here are a few dates on contemporary research in psychoanalysis. Briefly, in 1996, there was a keen debate on research in psychoanalysis. In particular, the exemplary debate at the summit of the official instance between Roger Wallerstein, former president of the IPA, and Andre Green, former vice president of the IPA, already openly revealed the issues and difference of research conception that refer ultimately to a more serious problem the difficulty of dialoguing between two conceptions of psychoanalysis, or to be in another way of thinking differently about psychoanalysis. In 2002, at the International Conference of Frankfurt on Pluralism in Science, the debate was concretized and disseminated in the free analytical region. On the one hand, there was an anglo saxon trend represented by Joseph and Anne-Marie Sandler, Ursula Sandler, Ursula Dreher, Werner Marianne Bolivar, and on the other hand, and then represented especially by the SPD, André Green, Alain Denis Jola, Roger Perron. Currently, the question of research is again in the foreground. But during this year, an SPP conception of research gradually took shape. The schematic formulation of Sandra Green expresses the cross of the matter. Quote, this prestigious term of research is surrounded by such an aura that it seemed 
that we can refer to it without the greatest reverence. Unfortunately, faced with the professional clinic experience in psychoanalysis, research discoveries appear to be meager. Unquote. This paper has been in the same state of mind for at least, at least 20 years, representing a specific trend different from all the research conception in psychoanalysis. Let's go back to Freud to understand what made Green so categorical category and many of us follow him. Two. Freud, his disciple and research, a presupposition, a presupposition. We will not understand anything about research in psychoanalysis until we appreciate the relationship that Freud maintained with it and how it differed from that of his closest disciple. There are three main steps in Freud's trajectory. First, the laboratory. Second, the psychological research, the study of study. And finally, the psychoanalysis research with the treatments of little harm at the Ratman, 99. Then Freud was invited to the prestigious Clark University in the uh, USA. As he returned to Vienna, the scientific community suddenly accepted psychoanalysis. But precisely, what was universally recognized was not so much psychoanalysis as a theory, but its therapeutic application. As soon as he returned to Vienna, his circle grew, his doctor, psychologist, guided by a medical way of thinking in search of a therapeutic technique, who claim to possess a, a precise and clear analytical method. Freud responded with his technical writing between 1910 and 1914. This technique would be a available to therapists who were to necessarily as who were, were not necessarily as passionate about psychoanalytic thought as those psychoanalysts who had followed Freud before. In this context, Freud attempted to undertake research to prove by real observation the universality of the Oedipus complex. He wanted to contradict the opponents of the grounds of scientific repairment. One, direct observation. Two, repeating all observation. Three, biography. But he soon dropped it. Advancing the field of anthropology, he saw Totem et Tabu, 1913, as a means of demonstrating the universality of the Oedip through, through the concordance, quote, so the concordance between the psychic life of savage and neurotic by the mere means of thought without the slightest need for material verification. But if Freud had known to convince the scientific world about their methods, it would not be the same for his disciple. Cesar Rohin was in charge of collecting material that would be used to refute Malinowski's arguments, denying the universality of the Oedipus complex. Founded by Marie Bonaparte, she stays in Australia, New Guinea, Arizona, among human Indians. But will not convince scientists, nor more than Totem et Tabu. 
Perhaps annoyed by his disciple, Freud's attitude bordered on flippancy. In 1932, he wrote, quote, in analysis, however, we have to do without the assistance afforded to research by experiment. And two years later, Freud was to answer Saul Rosenberg, who defended the need to prove experimentally the validity of psychoanalysis. Freud as follow, what the richness of religious analytical observation makes independent of experimental verification. And he quickly, but that, but that cannot hurt. However, Project's disciple still not follow him, although the notion of scientific but has already evolved. This was not because there is a lack of knowledge, knowledge of this in the analytic community. In any case, not individually, but the collective dimension of society is much more complex. I make the assumption that the maintenance of doubt about the scientific nature of psychoanalysis is a displacement of an impasse proper to the structure of analytic society. One, three. Analytic society, the scientists and transmission. On the long collective path that preceded the creation of the CRDP, it became increasingly evident that there was a permanent tension constitutive of all analytic society between two conflictual tendencies as, as today to pose. On the one hand, the scientific ambition of each member whose freedom of thought is valuable for individual research. And on the other hand, this same member have above all a duty to accomplish, to ensure the main reason for the existence of analytic society since the creation of the IPA in 1910, the rigorous and faithful transmission of psychoanalysis, its oneness in theory and practice. There is a conflict between the freedom of individual thought and the obligatory membership of analytic society without which they cannot be recognized as psychoanalysis. Collective denial becomes the easiest solution. This is what May Wallerstein say that psychoanalysis is, quote, a movement is all that this war implies calling for a delicate and disciplined allegiance, unquote. This is what I call a tension between freedom of thought and fidelity to the name of the group, the institutional superego of the rigorous transmission of Freudian thought. This is what Jean-Louis Baldacci referred to as the impasse, of, the impasse between orthodoxy and transgression. I will deal with that lies of the heart of the problem and its resolution. Freud's notion of scientificity and the difficulty of his disciple in griping, in griping. Four, Vienna, 1900. Scientific renewal and the birth of psychoanalysis. The works of the specialist of Vienna, 900, 
le Rider, Shark, Jean Claire, Shed, et Greg the Deal of Life of the Origin of Psychoanalysis. But I would like to add we can be considered as a determining movement for Freud thought. The renewal in the conception of science mainly by the theory of the image, image of hellholes and hearths. This Berlin based Bill Theorian influences Ludwig Borsmann, a professor scientist in Vienna who was probably frequented by Freud during his university study. Already, Borsman has introduced the notion of mental image, German Gedan Kell Bilder, and is whole to research process in the mind of the researcher. Then he states, quote, when one is dealing with a vastly expanded universe of fact, a direct description is never possible, but only a mental image. In this year, Freud confided to Fleiss the big secret. I do not believe in my neurotica anymore. Psychoanalysis is less reality trauma than fantasy trauma. Like Boltzmann, like Boltzmann, Freud would release his scientific curiosity. Is the rigorous scientist Boltzmann, if the rigorous scientist Boltzmann venture to consider his mounted image as of unquestionable scientific value, Freud could just as easily look into the study of his dream without fear of breaking this prevalent medical thought and his, his critics in the medical community who treated his major work, the interpretation of dream, as oniromancy. Also, a Darwinian conception of evolution was inculcated by Boltzmann think affirming, affirming, excuse me, quote, the questions are obviously nothing more than halls for the construction and combination of number and geometric concept, but these are nothing more than mental image from which phenomena can be predicted, unquote. But the Bolmasanian discovery coincided with another renewal, this time in the field of painting, with Clint. As for a contemporary, Clint shared the same events. He was a convincing Darwinian like Freud, having also understood the primordial importance of sexuality, and he was told with official art, quote, departing from the ruins of the substantialist conception of reality, unquote. Freud, already breaking this medicine, led to way in 1896 by founding a new discipline, psychoanalysis. Clean a year later, breaking with academicism, found another renewal of thought, Secessionism. Likely, Freud knew and embarked on what could be called secessionist thought. This encouraged us to consider psychoanalysis as a body of thought whose nature is subject to an evolutionary constraint. Psychoanalysis would be on one equal footing with scientific disciplines where discovery by thought and theories preceded their verification and confirmation by external technical proof. Just think of Einstein. Five. 
the concept of evolutionary psychoanalytic thought. My hypothesis is psychoanalytic thought evolved, evolved constantly during Freud's lifetime, but also after his death and in collective way, independently of region and different theoretical tendencies. With psychoanalysis, a new discipline and new concepts were born. During his lifetime, Freud revolutionized his own body of thought, changes cert certain notions considered as an immutable foundation. Etavis in 1995, no analyst dares to question the definition of which dream. But in 1932, Freud advanced in a short sentence. Quote, we say that a dream is the fulfillment of a wish. But if you want to take this latter objection into account, the traumatic neurosis, you can say, nevertheless, that a dream is an attempt, an attempt at the fulfillment of a wish. Beyond, beyond the principle there is the imperative need to transform the memory trace of the traumatic event. In 1923, Andre Green gave creator complexity to independent the notion of desire. His concept of unity were forced so to separate the notion, wish and trauma. The hallucinatory realization of the wish for an object is the reverse of the traumatic representation of its absence. I repeat, the hallucinatory realization of the wish for an object is the reverse of the traumatic representation of its absence. Green brought back to the notion of wish in form is form, which is founded value. This, I think, proves how complex psychoanalytic thought is. There was the same process with the evolution of the concept of trauma. Six, some conclusion. Although considered as evolutionary thought, psychoanalysis is not a new philosophy. It has the basis of a method of treatment that since 1914 would never change despite the extraordinary evolution of Freud's thought. It is a method that guarantees sufficiently verifiable results, thereby including psychoanalysis among scientific disciplines. Freud strongly confirms with this double, double step with the opening sentence of the outline of psychoanalysis. Quote, psychoanalysis make a basic assumption. The discussion of which, of which is reserved to philosophical thought, but the justification of which lies in its result. I repeat, Freud. Psychoanalysis makes a basic assumption, the discussion of which is reserved to philosophical thought, but the justification of which lies in this result. Unquote. At the same, same time, research in psychoanalysis will be carried out just as much by studying the origin of Freud's thought and its evolution then by integrity also the ideas of discipline and widening it. In brief, alongside classical research corresponding to its therapeutic application, we should seek 
a new method appropriated to the conception of psychoanalysis as evolutionary thought. Thus, among other, I understand the aim of the CRDP. Seven, the last point, presentation of the CRDP. The CRDP has what form of research activity, research workshop, working on a subject freely chosen in advance by the participant between three and ten, jointly engaged in research, studying as close as possible to the model of classical scientific research. This organization brings the CRDP close to the Freudian idea that the justification for psychoanalysis lies in its result. This is complemented by monthly plenary meeting, so research works and plenary meeting. Plenary meeting in which all members of the psychoanalysis society can participate. In progress for almost four years now, this unity research workshop plenary meeting represents a new scientific experiment to study more than one point. Today, I will limit myself to pointing out what in the CRDP interests me most personality, personality, personally, excuse me, according to my evolutionary conception of psychoanalysis. The research work presented their research during the plenary session. The originality of this is not so much to criticize what is presented, but to maintain the spontaneity of a discussion in free thinking. The goal is to find a pathway to build that rather than destroy what is presented. The spontaneity of the collective in plenary meeting has the potential to approach the evolution of the Freudian model. In other words, the CRDP would like to be a craftsman for the development of psychoanalysis. How do it? Certainly, free association is only is one of possible. It's only one of possible way. Today, I have understood only one thing. One thing: the historical point of view is part of the most important. The historical point of view is part of the most important. Gilbert Gatkin had a bright idea. The boss of lost found ideas. The boss of lost found ideas. That every research analyst has in his innermost being. By spontaneous work consists as much of memory as of forgetting. By the hazard of losing, finding, losing each analytic experience in himself the evolutionary processes of his own thought. Starting from himself, the analyst research will be sensitive to loss, refined loss in the development of collective analytical thought. He can grasp how it grows and the counterpart of the price to pay. Understanding the hazard of the development of analytic thinking would be one way to make it easier. To conclude, could the CRDP be a possible solution to the symptom, to the manifest sign of constitutional discomfort in analytic society? A sort of scientific agora a monthly meeting place, a possibility for any member to advance analytic knowledge, why some talk about the decline of psychoanalysis and the depression of psychoanalysis. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Cesar. Thank you very much for introducing us to your evolutionary personal way of thinking and designing psychoanalysis, psychoanalytic research. You have given us an overview of the diachronic development of psychoanalysis, of psychoanalytic thought, uh, through the prism of uh, evolutionary psychoanalytic thinking as a potential solution to overcome tensions. And now, Marie-France, please. So, thank you, César. But I would like to thank the IPA webinar committee for offering me the opportunity to discuss César's presentation on original research created in France, the CRDP, the Committee for Research and Development on Psychoanalysis. I also thank César for trusting me for this discussion. It is true that I accepted this proposal without hesitation, both in the name of a long friendship and my admiration for his work, I must rather say for their work, thinking also of Sarah, but also piqued by my own curiosity, what could the colleagues of the SPP have created as research? I was not disappointed when I discovered the long work of elaboration and its outcome. Dear César, I am in the discussion as a member of the Belgium Society of Psychoanalysis, which has always had close links with the French South, but which is also at the crossroad of several cultures because of its geographical location, and therefore also close to Anglo-Saxon culture. As is well known now in the field of art today, this particular situation gives us a source that is both original and open. My discussion will be in three points. The question of research in psychoanalysis or and, and on psychoanalysis. The historical viewpoint and the diversity of theory today and you see ARDP research and the tension between transmission and creativity. You describe the tension that existed from the beginning of psychoanalysis between a tendency to want to register it as a science and therefore to demonstrate its effectiveness and on the contrary the tendency to want to preserve the originality of its matter. We find this tension again today with the difference described by Daniel Wittlocher between research in psychoanalysis and research on psychoanalysis. For my part, I will not oppose these two types of research, even if I felt closer to one than the other, because they met two different requirements. The first, research in psychoanalysis, corresponds with the needs to keep our psychoanalytic theories alive, based on its own method, based today as in the past on observation. We must not forget that for Freud, the basis, the foundation of science, of all science, is observation, as he clearly states in To Introduce Narcissism. Later, in Psychoanalysis and Medicine, he will highlight the inseparable link between treatment and research, stating that it is not possible to treat a patient without learning something new. This is a specific framework of your new, new research project, if I understood it correctly. Research on psychoanalysis is necessary on its side, and I think we must recognize its full legitimacy. It is based on the necessity to respond to the need to remain in touch with the non-psychoanalytical scientific world not to deny interdependence with other same, and in order not to fall into marginalization. On the political side, unfortunately, 
its also response in our neoliberal world to prove its effectiveness in order not to lose control as a method of treatment. Most researchers recognize that they feel like tightrope walkers, to use Marianne Lusinger Bolleber expression, between staying in an ivory tower or getting lost in methodology that are inappropriate to the specificity of our study, the inconscience. It is my first question. You are quoting a very critical sentence from Green about this type of research, about the poverty of the results obtained. Do you share the same point of view? Second point. I was very interested in your historical development on Freud's own position on the research that you describe in a very lively way, as well as the parallel you make with the conception of Boltzmann's mental image and the freedom of discovery in Vienna of the years of the late 19th century, when you make the parallel with cream with an ambient academies to create a new artistic movement, the creation of secessionism. This idea of mental image, taken up by Poincaré, as you recall, shows clearly that with a secondary source, non enriched by the primary process, many scientific discoveries could not have occurred in all fields in psychoanalysis as in the other science. In recent years, with serendipity, this phenomenon of mental image of incidental source, a return to the scientific landscape, describing this ability to discover new objects or relationship with surprise without really wanting to search for them. In Freud's work, theory was in motion through his work and his movement continue with his successor from Ferenczi to Melanie Klein, Buenicott, Bayon, in France, Lacan, Green, and Laplanche, each bringing an opening of one of the axes of Freud's discoveries. At the beginning of the 1940s, in 1980, I led a seminar on Freud's reading with my colleague Baudouin de La Haye, where he reviews Freud's work step by step over, an, over a 10 year period as a group. We were amazed to see his power of work and also this openness to a question of certainty as I, this is disciple fail to follow in. I think from the beginning there was this tension you describe between transmission and creativity, transmission of orthodox theory and freedom of source. But did not Freud himself contribute to it as much as he was open to new thinking what it emerged in his own movement of soul, as much as he delimited what was true psychoanalysis. The rejection, for example, of Ferenczi's house, which was wrong to be right too early, is an example for, of this. And closer to us, when Green presented his report on the analyst's symbolization and absence, in the analytical framework at the London Congress in 1975, did Anna not say, it is not psychoanalysis? Question. We offer an analyst say, listening to a colleague who has another theory, the same sentence than Anna Freud. It is not psychoanalysis. When we see the number of different theories and point of view in psychoanalysis today, do we have to accept everything? Do you think there is a red line not to cross so that the theory is really 
psychoanalytic. My third point. I now come to the CRGP, Committee for Research and Development and of Psychoanalysis, whose organization you describe as both simple and complex. Simple when you talk about research workshop and complex in sharing everyone's discovery in a free source mode. I will say in the register of free association in a group, or as Pierre Olanier said, in a floating theoretical association. I think that this group dimension is crucial in the system setup since its creation, because you stress several times that is a common problem, even you are at the origin of it. Your proposal enlightened me on an experience lived in my society. As I have had the opportunity to tell you, in our society, we have many working groups, 25, which is huge for a small society like ours. Several times, we have offered group members the opportunity to share their discovery and experiences. In general, we have few answers, sometimes a presentation or a proposal for a colloquium theme, but overall little sharing. Thinking about the method you describe, I think that the creative thinking may have been blocked by the concern to appear compliant, what you call a community thinking. Even so, in our society, as I said at the beginning, we have a plurality of analytical cells. To return to the group aspect, I will briefly mention a working group of which I am a member at the EPF, the specificity of psychoanalytic treatment through interanalytic group work, which propose group at EPF conferences. What seemed important to me when comparing the system created in France by your group and that of specificity is that the group serves as a sounding board for everyone's creativity. It opens up a form of theoretical associative freedom that makes participants, some participants say, that they, found, they have found the pleasure of free association as they had not known it since their own analysis. This is, this is not without frightening others elsewhere. I wonder if the strength of group association was not already in an intuition of Freud in his famous Wednesday Psychological Society, the first crucible of Freud discoveries. I have obviously several other questions. The first one, how do you understand this loss of the pleasure of free association, the fear of this kind of floating theoretical association? Do you think it is it could be related to the way of transmitting? Another question. I think it would be nice if you can give some example of themes that were put to work in the workshop and also a brief example of an plenary discussions. Another question, more pragmatically, how do you imagine sharing your discovery? Or do you think that movement, creative thinking, is already a discovery in itself? Thank you, César, for sharing with us your CRDP experience. Thank you, Marie-France. Uh, thank you. Maybe we will uh, take a few minutes to have uh, César, César answer your question very briefly. César, please. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Marie France, uh, I warmly thank for agreeing that to discuss my test. I am not disappointed. 
Her question very relevant at uh, makes me question myself and try to go further. They deserve that we continue the discussions today, limited, of course, and that we find another moment to take the necessary time. Your question is primarily about the notion of re research itself. You recall the distinction made by Wildoche between research in and research on psychoanalysis, which brings us back to the debate I had with him in uh, 2002, just a few months after the Frankfurt Colloquium. Also in 2002, at the CP, uh, Congress of the Psychoanalysis de Langue Francaise in Bruxelles, mm -hmm. a workshop of psychoanalytic research. Yeah. And still, all the place devoted to research such as the uh, Revue Francaise de Psychoanalysis in 2001. There, Fonagui, president uh, of IEPA Standard Research Committee, considered that. Uh, what to say that the consulting firm is invariably at the origin of the theoretical change derived from idealist, idealization or erroneous reasoning. I quote, say by the president of the IPA research, selon on the sidereal distance with the French design. Mm. A question in my turn. Such a proficient meeting isn't it a sign or even a symptom of occult anism? It seems like a relentless quest for something that is constantly hiding. In my talk, I propose the explanation of the scientific transmission tension. Mm -hmm. With regard to the notion of observation, of which Freud certainly insists often, we must be careful. The meaning is very wide, from the observation by the sense organs to the observation by the analyst in session of his own thought mm -hmm. or the attitude of the scientist following Boltzmann, Poincaré, Kekulé and other to attentive to mental image. Regarding the observation observation reality, we know the answers answers of the observations guess are wrong. Or to take the example of Winnicott, let's not be simplistic. The sight of a child is a transitional object, is neither the initial condition nor the proof of the validity of the discoveries of the transitional phenomenon. Between Winnicott's observation of the child and his conception of transitional transitionality, the link is neither direct nor determinative. The existence of an object used in this way was known to nurses and pediatricians well before Winnicott as the fact that little children must as the fact that little children masturbate was will known before Freud. It is capacity not to observe but to grasp between the analytical relationships a new general link which has been decisive for the discovery of transitionality. Mm. Was the observation of the baby playing with a transitional object and indispensable? It has probably made it possible to give concrete form to an intuition that could have provided another figure without, however, 
is meaning being different. Mm -hmm. Every Nicotian thought of transitionality going so far as to give a new meaning to the notion of culture cannot be reduced to the element of the observation of the child with his object. Mm -hmm. As is just as wrong to simplify the Lacanian theory of spec speculality and narcissism at the mirror stage. Mm -hmm. The same way, the fam famous real game of the grand song of Freud is only one of the figures of the Freudian discovery of the compulsion of repetition, mm -hmm. already substantiated at the moment of the observation on the traumatic and culminating neurosis led to the theoretical as aval that was the conception of the death drive. As for problem of the diversity of theory, I had a very interesting debate with chemistry uh, 2015. We have agreed that diversity is not a disadvantage, but a wealth and that in any case the analyst cannot do cannot do anything and that the future of theories is the unconscious collective thought the one that govern the development of psychoanalysis in any case i redouble my thanks marie france for your question that made me think and think more for a while. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, Cesar. But perhaps the audience have also questions. <clears throat> thank you both. Thank you, Marie France. Thank you, Cesar. Uh, thank you for sharing with us your rich experience of uh, the constructive, uh, constructive and uh, engaging dialogue. And now it's the um, uh, question answer session. So I will uh, propose you two questions, one for uh, Cesar, the other for uh, uh, Marie-France, uh, because participants had addressed it to each one of you. I will read it at the same time, at the same time, the one after the other, and then you will try to, to answer. So, um, Cesar, do you consider that the period 19... 1923, that is the theory that Freud proposes in Beyond the Pleasure Principle mm -hmm. and in Mass Psychology and Ego Analysis. Do you think that this is a part of Freudian scientific research? How would you define this evolutionary period? Mm -hmm. And a question for uh, Marie France other than the mental image concept how do you think freud was influenced by charcot research on hysteria hmm. we could start by cesar maybe and uh, yes cesar yeah, uh, thank you uh, i think is the it is the the moment when Freud renounced definitely the medical thought and the preoccupation of therapeutic care. His ambition is different now. He does to develop a thought about human being by putting himself at the same level as Copernic and Darwin. Is, it is our difficulty as analysts and our tendency to take refuge in therapeutic care. Thank you. And Marie France about Charcot? Yes, uh, I think uh, the, it is nearly the same period. Uh, Freud was influenced by Charcot and Boltzmann. It is nearly the same period. And I think all the things, uh, uh, all the thoughts in the same time uh, open the mind of uh, Freud 
to see the, the psychi psychic life in the other side. And I think it is a very important, this uh, crossroad of different manner to see uh, image, mental image. Okay. Thank you. A uh, 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 question, it is addressed to both. What do both presenters think of the development of the field of neuropsychoanalysis? Mindful on Cesar's Botella focus on images, image representations, Freud said in the project, the motor images are perceptions based on his knowledge of Helmholtz. It now appears in neuroscience that brain motor activations are enough to elicit central images or representations. Neuroscience can reveal how visionary psychoanalytic theory is. What do you think? <coughs> what a problem. <laughs> what a problem. Maybe yeah. um, who wants to start? Um... Yes, uh, I can try to start and we can discuss uh, with Cesar, but um, I think it is uh, very difficult for me to have a representation of the question because I, I am not. Uh, 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 how can I say? Uh, I, I don't know very well the neuropsychoanalytic uh, side, and but I, I, I have a colleague uh, who uh, is very uh, interested by this uh, side. Uh, I, I have some difficulty to uh, think uh, about uh, inscription in the brain of something of the unconscious. I, I think it is another level, but I think also something appears in the, when you do uh, ERM, I don't know in English. Uh, rapid eye movement. Yes. Rapid eye movement. Uh, and uh, I, I think it is very uh, important no, to have the possibility uh, to um, to discuss okay. with a neuroscientific. What do you think, Cesar? Uh, I repeat, it's a, a problem, the importance that the neuroscience occupy actually and in the medical uh, thought, in the psychiatry thought. But the psychoanalysis uh, uh, Cesar, do you need some help? Yeah, yeah, uh, excuse me, excuse me. In any case, uh, the the validity of uh, psychoanalysis uh, is no, is, is independent mm -hmm. the uh, the knowledge uh, the neuropsychoanalysis. We are not we are not uh, besoin need need no, not need another uh, another science to uh, work in psychoanalysis but but uh, i know uh, well uh, the the savances of neuroscience uh, finally after 10 20 years uh, the results are meager for the psychoanalysis mm -hmm. I think the neuroscientific psychoanalysis is more, like I said, a research on psychoanalysis and not research in psychoanalysis. 
and it is also important, but it is not the same level for me. Maybe uh, Cesar would like to to answer, the, as I know his thoughts, uh, that uh, neuroscience is a, a way to discuss with other disciplines, neuropsychoanalysis, I don't know, Cesar. Mm -hmm. To, 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 there are the method technical to, uh, to the nevrous uh, uh, its result is very important, but it's not it's not uh, all uh, for the psychoanalysis. The psychoanalysis is a thought. It's a thought, uh, uh, non philosophical, but thought who chemin uh, uh, alone. Uh, but uh, for the therape therapeutic therapeutic method, uh, the 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 results on the verification and the confirmation uh, is proven for yourself is proven the the, the validity. Well, voilà. Excuse me. The validity of Freudian theory. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I will go on. Uh, I think that maybe Cesar is uh, helped. Uh, maybe if you want to translate, to say something in French and uh, to translate it in English, it will be possible. So possible. I will give you uh, two questions that are related. So the first one is addressed to both presenters. In the USA, United States, many analysts are unaware of the existence of a large quantity of high quality research in France, Belgium, Germany, and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Do you think it will be helpful to advance the psychoanalytic movement and evolution if more research from Europe could be published in the USA journal devoted exclusively to psychoanalysis? And another one I would like to associate, another question is the following. Uh, may I ask, what are the most significant research questions that are of interest in France nowadays? Mm. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't understand the question. Euh, quels sont les, 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 les sujets de recherche euh, en psychanalyse en France aujourd'hui Les plus importantes questions. Ce uh, n'est pas possible. C'est un vaste, vaste sujet pour uh, discuter de recherche en France. Uh, J'aurais besoin de notre, de notre webinar pour parler, c'est pas possible. I, I, I said that I, I, I ought to limit my, my own ideas, uh, but my ideas is not all research in France. Okay. Uh, I, I will go on then uh, staying a bit more on uh, neuroscience because uh, there is a, um, an important remark from uh, Howard Levin. Uh, is the resort of the question about neuroscience an example of the problem of the tension that Cesar has described as inevitably existing between research in psychoanalysis and research on psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. uh, I will uh, translate it in French for French participants. Est-ce que les euh, résultats de est-ce que les, les résultats de la question euh, sur les neurosciences est un exemple du problème de la tension que César a décrit 
comme inévitable euh, entre la yes. recherche in, euh, une, un, une psychanalyse mm. et la recherche en psychanalyse. Oui. Justement, euh, en français. Non, non, en anglais. Ou euh, en traduit, oui. <rire> en traduit, en traduit. Vas-y, en français. Le euh, disconfort euh, des psychanalystes euh, dans, dans sa société, des tensions euh, fait que euh, des tensions internes fait que on cherche euh, à l'extérieur des solutions pour continuer à nier le conflit interne entre euh, des ambitions euh, personnelles et des pensées et la soumission euh, la soumission à la à l'obligation de, de transmettre. Le champ est très, très difficile, pour, euh, d'autant qu'il y a une tendance à donner une priorité à la transmission et au détriment euh, de la recherche. Mm -hmm. César, si tu veux qu'on traduit, il faut peut-être passer la parole à la personne qui est à côté de toi et faire des, des petites phrases. If we are going to translate, we need uh, short sentences. <clears throat> uh, I can answer to the question uh, when Cesar no, is... Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, Cesar uh, responded in French, so we have to translate in English. Okay. I think that somebody is, is right beside Cesar that could, uh, could translate. C'est César, dis-le en français, mais fais des petites phrases. Il est en français. Mais qu est Et que la personne qui est à côté de toi traduit en anglais. Mais, how is the question now? I, I, I have, a, I respond à the question in, in French. Yes, so the person who is beside you could translate to us your response, please? Yes. Ah. Okay. Cesar was saying, was trying to say that the tension which is inherent to research on psychoanalysis and research in psychoanalysis is also revealing a lot of other tensions which can be ongoing in the societies mm -hmm. and between members. Okay. It's clear? Yes. yes. <laughs> Marie-France? But uh, uh, I was thinking at the first question uh, about uh, the uh, research in Europe, uh, in uh, France and Belgium, and, so, uh, and uh, the difficulty for uh, North American uh, analysts to be in contact with uh, scientific uh, creation in Europe. Perhaps it is also the role of IPA to facilitate uh, in the Congress exchange in uh, between the different tendency in the IPA because uh, I, I have the impression you have a very difficult uh, dialogue between the different ma manner to think about psychoanalysis. Yes. I will go on with another question. Mm -hmm. The question image representation mm -hmm. even though the passage is not automatic even though the yeah. was central for freud since 1891 on aphasia yes do you both consider language as a tool for psychoanalytic research in which way we can reflect upon language in session to an 
change our research, mm. enhance our research. Alors, la question image représentation, même si le passage n'est pas automatique, Automatique. était central pour Freud since depuis 1891. C'est les études de, sur la phasie. Mm -hmm. euh, Est-ce que vous deux considérez que le langage est un outil pour la recherche en psychanalyse et en quel, de quelle façon nous pouvons euh, l'utiliser ou nous pouvons réfléchir sur le langage pour l'utiliser Euh, dans notre dans nos recherches euh, dans nos recherches en psychanalyse mmh. le, le, le propre du, du, lang, du, lang, du langage c'est que c'est une affaire du moi mmh. et donc c'est quelque chose par lequel on doit passer euh, pour euh, pouvoir pour pouvoir penser et pouvoir euh, être dans la vie Mais c'est une affaire du moi. Ce n'est pas euh, les forces qui sont derrière, sont des forces, euh, pas seulement l'inconscient, premier topic, mais des forces euh, qui sont inaccessibles, euh, sans transformation, euh, pour euh, être, devenir des représentations du mot, dont de la pensée. Euh, mmh. Et il y a. Il y a euh, Entre, entre euh, par exemple, par, par rapport de l'image, pour que l'image euh, scientifique, Boltzmann, ou calculé, ou, ou peuvent avoir, l'image en elle-même n'est qu'une une façon, une façon d'aborder de, de, de un problème, une affaire, une question qui n'est pas accessible directement par la pensée en mots. Donc, dans le, au moment de, de la pensée régrédiente, soit, soit pendant le, le rêve, soit dans un moment, euh, quelque chose se faufile, malgré le moi rationnel et le moi secondaire, se faufile sous forme d'une image pour pouvoir accéder, le seul moyen pour pouvoir accéder à penser quelque chose qui travaille les chercheurs depuis très longtemps. La traduction Language is belonging to the ego. The motions, the drive, the drive motions behind are not accessible normally in language. The mm -hmm. image which will appear thanks to formal regression is an outcome of those unconscious motions. Thank you, Marie uh, Liebenstein, because I recognize your voice. <laughs> I, I am thinking uh, of a sentence of Green, Andre Green. It is very difficult uh, to think, to use the word of the consciousness to say something of the unconscious, because it is not the same languages. The, la un the languages of unconscious, it's also image, but it's also uh, a feeling, memory of feelings. It is also different manner to uh, the body answer. And uh, it, it is very difficult to approach this kind of manifestation uh, by the language di directly. It's clear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will try to um, give you another question. Alors, it's a bit long, but. <laughs> Alors. Uh, thank you very much, Cesar Botella, for these reflection and proposals. The recontextualization of the emergence of psychoanalysis is precious, with the exaltation of Freud's transfer to Fleece without, within a Vienna full of creativity. A remark and a question you privilege 
street text of Freud, in which the murder of the father holds an essential place. A deeper murder in the interpretation of dreams, the murder of the primitive father in Totem et Tabu, the murder of the father in Moses the man for Freud. For Freud, this act of murder is involved in several consequences. The organization of groups, the clan of brothers, the prescription of inter interdictions and prohibition of incest, and the creation of group mentalities. My question, do you think that evolutionary psychoanalytic thinking based on a group process could be a deferred effect of such a murder of the father? And to be more precise, an obedient après coup to revive the father's life to restore an evolutionary father? That is the question. <laughs> That's the question. Does the murder of father uh, in the, in the Le problème dans institutionnel et la tension interne aux institutions, se joue euh, le meurtre de, 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 des images parentales du de, de, de père. Euh, it's very important, it's very important dans le, in this question, that uh, associate uh, the three, the three, uh, the three articles principal of de Freud, for me, concerning the development of his pensée, that is, in en éloignant de la cure, de the necessity of the method, that is, the interpretation of the rêve totem et tabou de Moïse en 38, and the idea que c'est le, 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 meurtre de, le meurtre du père joue un rôle euh, principal et c'est dispensable. Et évidemment, euh, pourquoi la CRDP a besoin en même temps d'un côté de faire de la recherche du son classique, le, 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 le satellite de recherche le plus proche, Parce que c'est une réalité, parce que la méthode existe, parce qu'il faut, il faut euh, ne pas trop s'éloigner de, euh, de la pensée freudienne. Traduction, pas, euh, traduction. Pardon Traduction et on continue après. Ah ben, oui. Euh... The murder of the father is certainly crucial in any group process in an analytical society. The, true, the three mentioned papers of Freud, the interpretation of dreams, Totem and Tabu and Moses, are indispensable to think of psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. And it's done and redone. Je voudrais juste pour l'agora, la, les, les réunions collectives de la CRDP, où il y a une liberté absolue, où on ne veut pas critiquer ce qu'on présente, on veut plutôt créer un chemin ensemble. C'est une affaire de, de frères, de, 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 de fils, euh, qui, euh, qui à la fois cherchent euh, le meurtre, euh, le meurtre du père, Donc, et qu'à la fois, c'est pour euh, épurger ces pères euh, qu'on veut, qu veut éliminer, qu'on veut dépasser, pour aussitôt créer un autre, un autre père à suivre. L'histoire de la psychanalyse, quand même, est impressionnante. Comment on suit euh, Freud en premier, après on se sépare, se fait ainsi, Et puis il y a toute la chaîne qui suit euh, à partir de Melanie Klein, Winnicott, Bion. Euh, il y a une tendance à diviniser 
un maître, à un moment donné, pour le suivre. Mm -hmm. Michel Fang répétait, quand on est yang, binicotien, bionien, voire freudien, on n'est rien. Donc il faut, il faut se détacher des maîtres à penser pour créer, créer sa propre pensée, mais bah, obligatoirement, on aura une tendance à trouver le bon père à suivre. Traduction Um, those, those meetings of the CRDP are like a Greek agora, where everybody speaks and is free to speak. Uh, and of course, this is a meeting or an affair, he said exactly, between brothers and sons. And mm -hmm. the only way to find its own thinking is always the attacking and the murder of a father, but who is immediately replaced by another father, father and that continues and continues. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not only a story of it's also a necessity of the moi, on revient au moi, that doit toujours euh, s'expliquer le monde, s'expliquer ce qui lui arrive dans une tendance, c'est dans tout et tabou que Freud le dit, c'est une, une tendance à une euh, convergence, cohérence des choses pour être sûr qu'il peut faire face à, au, à, au monde, à, la, euh, à mmh. tout ce qui, qui peut être une menace. Et donc, euh, la pensée de, va vers trouver une explication rationnelle, convergente et cohérente, et, et, mais il y a des effets permanents d'après coup, d'après coup qui fait que on refait les choses pour le et du fait de le repenser fait que ce qui était dans le passé prend une autre forme et ainsi de suite. C'est sans faire la psychanalyse sera toujours inachevé la pensée psychanalytique. C'est un inachèvement permanent, comme la vie psychique, c'est un inachèvement permanent, heureusement. Mm -hmm. Même la mort, <rire> le temps nous arrêter, mais ce n'est pas sûr. La traduction, peut-être La traduction This is not only a drive question, it is also an ego necessity to understand and try to control, have the impression to control the threatens of the world. Mm -hmm. of the, and all this is perpetuating because there are a series of après coup or deferred actions which reconstruct constantly this reality, mm -hmm. construction. But anyhow, César said that it's without end, endless, totally endless, as psychoanalysis itself, which is endless. Yes. And happily, and will remain happily endless. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, it is, uh, it, it left, uh, left two more minutes, many questions about the CRDP, the uh, committee, the commission on, for, of research and development, but we don't have the time to continue. Uh, I would like to, to thank you very much, Cesar and Marie-France. Uh, you have expressed us, uh, your passion for psychoanalytic uh, thought and the pleasure you have in sharing this passion uh, with colleagues. Thank you for your precise experience of enriching dialogue that psychoanalysts can develop between us before going out to discuss with other uh, disciplines in order to preserve psychoanalysis of future and therefore our future. Thank you very much. Thank you to participants also. I would like to say that the next uh, uh, webinar is on uh, June 23rd and it will be on confidentiality with Andrew Brook, uh, Nair Bonifia Faccino, John Charter, 
Alanar Furlog. So save the day and thank you very much once more, Cesar, Marie-France, and to all of you, the participants who stayed with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emilia. Thank you, Elena. Have a webinars. And thank you, Marilia, for the translation. Thank you. <laughs> and bye-bye, everybody. Bye.